What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B. Thank you for tuning in for Together FTR. I am joined by Mr. Lambert and Casey King. My boys are in the building. We're here to make noise. We got some awesome things to talk about tonight. Got some cool things to promote as well. Uh, speaking of promoting, make sure to go onto YouTube on the Together FTR uh, channel and then type in... You, you can scroll down a little bit. You can either search this or... You can scroll down a little bit. It's going to be DTM by Nugs B. Stands for doing too much because I'm a little extra out here. I mean, y'all know me for a long time. <laughs> I'm a little bit extra, you know. Just a, just a little. So I, had to, I had to talk my mess uh, on the mic. It's been a while since I've dropped a new song. It's a banger, too. Yeah, it's a banger, baby. It's a banger for real. Um, I made a video to it as well on Facebook. I took Afro Samurai and threw that in there, and I did the Chappelle Show and uh, a clip from the Boondocks, a clip from Baby Boy, because I'm Jody for real. Not anymore. I'm retired. Uh, I'm happily with my girl, but I used to be Jody, and that's real talk. So we're going to get into this episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in once again. And uh, make sure to go subscribe and hit the bell at TogetherFTR. Let's see here. So the first thing on our entertainment history for the day is it's truly beautiful. It truly is beautiful, my friends. So on this day in 1967, Jim Morrison becomes first rocker arrested mid-performance. Jim Morrison of the Doors is arrested at his own concert in New Haven, Connecticut, after a police officer finds him backstage with a young girl and maces him. It's the first time a famous musician is arrested in the middle of a performance. Not a shocker there at all. Not a shocker. Yeah, you could have said guest the musician, and I would have guessed Jim Morrison. Yeah. I love it. Here's the thing. The reason I said you all are going to love this is because that's his jam. The Doors oh, yeah. he loves them. Love it. Yeah. I do not. Do you like The Doors? Uh, everything I've heard I've, I've liked. I don't seek them out. Fair enough. Fair I enough. Seek them okay, out. I, I take that. With me, you, we've already had this discussion a million yeah. times. Like, I just can't get with them. Obviously, People Are Strange is a great record, and I can't deny yeah. it. I cannot deny it. Their first album was a solid album, but I'm with you on the sense of I don't seek them out. Mm. You know, like I don't really. If it comes on, you're still jamming to it. You're not turning it off. Exactly. But okay, okay. Exactly. I can accept that. I'm cool with that. I mean, I listened to them a lot. As soon as you said was arrested, I was like, okay. Which time? Like, I, had, I had to think of which time, which time that he was arrested was his first. You know, I had to go back and kind of think about which one it was because he was arrested on stage a couple times. Yeah, this was the first mid performance okay. Okay. actually. So I thought that was really hilarious. Legend. 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 And that's one thing that I can say. I did like Jim Morrison as a person because. He was a wild card, and that's my type of people. I like a crazy person. I like somebody who's just off the cuff. He might just do some, he, you know, he's a time bomb. He might do something crazy. He was definitely a little crazy. That's my type of people, bro. Like, like, yeah. like, I like a crazy. G. Allen type? You know, like, for real, like, I like my I like my people to be like Sam Kinison or something. Okay. You know, like somebody who's just off the chain, dude. Yeah. Like, you never know what you're going to get when you're kicking it with this person. Yep. It could really go all the way sideways. Yep. And you could be laughing the entire time, you know. So then we got another one that I know you both are going to love because I do know that you like this band and this person. On this day in 1969, Jacob Dylan, lead singer for the Wallflowers, is born Wait, in 69. New York City. I was born in 69. He was born in 69. He's that old? He's that old. Bro. Jacob Dylan. My born bad. in New York City, New York, he is the fifth and youngest child of Bob Dylan and his first wife, Sarah Lowndes, I think that's her name. But you like the Wallflowers. I do. I okay. like. Uh, I'm more of a fan of Bob Dylan. Uh, Fair yeah, enough. His, himself, but yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Wallflowers. It's. I, I feel like you posted on one of my things one time when I was talking about the Wallflowers. That's why I said that. Like you had said, like man, I love the Wallflowers, the first album or something, or maybe it was you. It was one of you though. I, I love Wallflowers. Jacob okay. Dylan's a great musician, but I mean, I go back to his dad. I mean, my my youngest son's name is 
Dylan Thomas, Straight named up. after the same poet that Bob Dylan is uh, named yeah, after. My shoot name Dylan is after Bob Dylan. Yeah. That's so. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. It's crazy because I'm going to push against both of you and say that Jacob Dylan is a way better artist than Bob Dylan. Oh. Well, you can say that. You have time. <laughs> you, yeah, you can say you have what you want. To that. Freedom of speech, First Amendment. <laughs> I'm out here with, uh, expressing my right, okay? I mean, I, no, will, I will say as far as the quality and texture of his voice – Thank you. I, I will completely agree that he has that. Bob Dylan definitely. However, takes it. when you're talking about artistry, you're talking Straight about up. performance, you're talking about the just the, the legendary changes that were made. Oh yeah, Bob Dylan all day long. So man. look, you, you got deep on it. I was just talking mess out here. He was like, "Hey, look, man. First of all, he was a better." Artist. We got, a, got we got offended there, y'all, bro. Yeah, yeah. Y'all both literally was ready to kill me over. Mike said, "Look, oh, you talking about saying. my boy? You talking about my boy, Bob Dylan?" First, he was dogging it. on the doors. Now we dogging on Bob Dylan. I love like, that you all just who got made more money? Who, who made oh, more money? Bob Dylan. I was about to, I was, I was about to tag him in here. I was getting ready to. <laughs> My man was getting ready to throw me through this table, people. So if you're tuned in, send prayers. He might might be squeaky clean, but I am not. (laughs) (laughs) Old dirty. Old dirty out here. Old dirty Lambo. ODB, baby. ODL. Let's go. Let's go. Um, But yeah, I always thought you did literally say my true perspective. I was just talking smack because you already know. I'm, I'm I'm a silly goose. What can you do? And what you said with the quality of his voice yeah. and the way he makes songs were more pleasing to the ear. Yeah. They were more pleasant to the ear because Bob Dylan's voice was not great, but he is hands no. down one of the best songwriters, period. Yeah. Next to Paul McCartney and John Lennon, James Robert Taylor. Plant, James yep. Taylor, yep. Jimmy Page, Billy Joel, like we can go on for hours about yep. Bruce Springsteen. Like when it comes to songwriting, Jimi Hendrix, you know, uh, Al Green, so on and so forth. It's a ton of them. Just because ton, you said bro. Bob Dylan, I gotta ask though. What's up? Just because you said Bob Dylan, one of my favorite bands of all time, uh-huh. with Bob Dylan in it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever listened to? I don't think we've ever talked about this. We have I, talked I, about okay. this. Okay, the Traveling Wilburys. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. He would know. Yeah. Casey King's that's, out that's here. That's my baby. jam. He's the out here. The greatest super group of all. Straight straight yes. Up. The yeah. only super was group to ever. Dylan, was it Tom Petty in it too? Tom, Tom Petty, Petty wasn't supposed to be in it. But he actually. ended up being. He ended in up in it. Roy Orbison. Okay. George Harrison. Yep. George Harrison. Yes. Uh, what's a what's a uh, L E uh, E L O guy? Uh, uh, Jeff. Um, what? There's the other guy, you know, Kenny Jeff's son. L E, what'd you say? He's, he's in ELO. Oh, oh okay. Jeff, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, uh, I can't. Yeah, 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 gotcha. Electric Light Orchestra, Electric, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I can't think. I can never think of his name. We'll look it up. But the they were phenomenal. The only person that can, can touch him is Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Yeah. Straight up. But yeah. Even then, like, they had a much longer run. Yes. But Martin, the peak of the Wilburys. Yeah, I was saying, Medeski Martin. And, and also, not only that, another super band would be uh, Oysterhead, man. You guys know about Oysterhead? No, I don't. Okay, so Oysterhead was Trey Anastasio and uh, and uh, uh, Les Claypool, okay. and uh, I think it was. Uh, let me look them up. It was the Highwaymen too, but they were yeah, the yeah, talking. yeah. So Oysterhead only did like one tour or two tours together, but it was let's see here. Stuart Copeland. So he okay. is. Let's see. He was the. Oh, hold up! Here's something crazy on me for a second. He was the drummer of the police. Okay. okay. So okay. it was Trey Nostagio, which is the lead singer of Fish. <clears throat> Les Claypool, who was the lead singer of Primus and the, ba- well, the bass, the bass player, player yeah. uh, the lead singer though, and then Stuart Copeland from the Police. Gotcha. That was a gotcha. hitter, but they they only did like maybe one or two tours. But it was like one of those like hitters, like bangers. They get together and like did a tour. Like they were at Bonnaroo, I think, like one year. Like this was years ago. This was in. 2000, 2001, okay. 2006, and then 2019 to present. So, like, they're back now. Like, they've done yeah. a few shows or something like that. That sounds good. I mean, no, it's no Traveling Wilburys. It's no, it's it's no, it's it's no, no. Tweeter and a Monkey no Man, one, you know? No. Like, uh, you're absolutely right. You, you guys are 100% right. Of, of a, a new band forming. I don't know if you're going to be familiar with these artists or not. The, uh-huh. the Avid Brothers, my favorite I love band. Mm-hmm. My brother, he, dude, he loves the Avid Brothers. He got me into them years they're ago. They're supposed to be allegedly <clears throat> recording a couple of albums with Jason Isbell. I don't know who uh, that is. From the 500 unit. He's touted as the greatest songwriter going today. Really? Uh, I'm not That's the biggest crazy. fan of him. Sure. But the Avery Brothers are, are so are, fire. Yeah, they're my favorite. So fire. Uh, Dude, Laundry Room. That's all I got to say. Dude, that, 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 that was my most listened to Avery Brothers song this That's year. That's literally all I have to say. And if nobody, if you, if people out here have not listened to the Avery Brothers, go listen to Laundry Room. Go listen to Perfect Space. Mm. Go listen to I and Love and You in, in the, the whole album, bro. Yeah. The whole album. That album is literally life changing. Uh, emotional. Is my favorite album by him. Really? And it's 
fantastic. That's awesome, it's man. Fantastic. Like I said, Laundry Room, that's all I have to say. Point, period. Like, that song is... Dude, have you seen the Cardinal Sessions they did where it was, like, outside and they were playing it? Yeah, absolutely. Scott and Seth? Every sort of okay, media. I'm sure. You, you, really, you really rock with them. I yeah, got you. Yeah. That's literally my was favorite it? version of Laundry Room, and it truly gives me chills to it's, listen to it. I, I saw them in concert at Kings Island this year. Sick! So I'm a big roller coaster guy. She loves absolutely. roller coasters. Absolutely. Uh, so I got to go ride roller coasters all day and then Dude. get up the April Brothers yes. concert. That's so and, sick. Uh, and that, hey. was, that was our honeymoon this year. That's so, so awesome. cool, yeah, man. That's, awesome. that's so right. cool. Also, you're absolutely right. Uh, one thing I want to add, I got I to gotta give my man his credit. I am blocking the Pokeball because I have a huge head. <laughs> I told you. So I thought, I I'm going to lean on my man. I'm going to get a little sleepy out here. Like, for real, bro. I'm blocking the Pokeball. I'm mad now. Coming close, baby. You Coming know, close. Look, he's going to hold me, baby. That's Hold right. me closer. Hold tiny me closer. Tiny Dancer. Come to- here, Tiny Dancer. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. That's, that's what right, I'm that's saying, right. baby. Come on now. Last super group I'm going to throw out here real quick. Throw it. Temple the Dog. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. What? Right now. Look at them up immediately. Okay, so Mother Love Bone. Late 90s. Uh, mid mid to late 90s grunge group. Okay. Lead singer. Chris Cornell. The list, lead okay. singer. Lead singer. Uh, he dies. I, can't, I can never remember his name. Um, they they find a young kind of strange sounding singer mm-hmm. uh, by the name Andrew Wood was the one who died by the name of Eddie Vedder. <gasps> they pull in Eddie Vedder, Chris Cornell, and basically what you end up with is Temple the Dog, who basically is almost like a they're almost like a super group made out of two future rock bands yeah. basically because you know they become of of course yeah, Soundgarden yeah. Have, and Pearl Jam. Dude. What's that? The uh, Hunger Strike was the Hunger big song Strike. that they had. Yes. Yes. I guarantee I you. Mo- I, I don't know how you couldn't have heard right that. There, so I've yeah. definitely seen this yes. picture of them. Yeah, I had a conversation with my buddy Nick about this on the way home from WrestleCade this weekend. That really? song was playing. Hunger Strike yep. is on my playlist. Yeah. And uh, he, he was like, did you know Eddie Vedder and Chris Cornell was in this? Yes. I didn't know, I didn't know the name of the band, yes. though. Yes. Temple of the Dog. Ama- amazing. I started to say album, but I have it on cassette. It's in the car. <laughs> I'm not a big album guy. I always listen to singles, man. Really? Like, yeah. I'm a Spotify. I'm a product of Spotify. Fair enough. Fair enough, like, fair enough I'm old. I listen to cassette tapes fair and enough, CDs. Enough. Nothing I'll wrong you, with that. I'll be honest. When it comes to listening to music, I would love to sit down and listen to a record mm-hmm. and chill and do all that. But realistically, <clears throat> I'm bumping YouTube music. I don't even have Spotify. Like I have yeah. Spotify to listen to Joe Rogan and like mm-hmm. a few podcasts that are on there that don't like I. Don't bump them on YouTube. I don't listen to them, whatever. And there's like, you know, with Spotify, like, that's pretty much it. But YouTube music, because it literally has every single song you could yeah. ever wish yeah. for. Yeah, every music video. I pay the 10 bucks. I don't care. No ads. Boom. Get yep. me in there. But what I do is, where I've had it for years, man, it builds me such killer playlists. Mm-hmm. I just put a song on, and I just trust it. Yep. I trust you, YouTube, baby. Yep. Yep. Take care of old dad. If, you feel me? Take care of old dad. It, it's and good. I can just man. bump it, dude. And it, it could be... Typically, it'll be like two songs. Like if I pick like a, if I play like a Paramore song or something. I, I love Paramore. I don't mm-hmm. care what y'all say, bro. They're fire. I don't care if y'all hate on them. I love them, dude. So if I put a Paramore song on, it'll play another one. Or if I put like a Zeppelin song on, it'll play one more, and then it'll switch to like that flow. It'll like catch okay. my vibe. Okay. Like it catches my vibe, bro, and gets me exactly right. That's I need hard to, to find music programs that, that streaming programs that will do that because like I was listening the other day. I just wanted to listen. I, you know, I was doing some house cleaning at the house, and I wanted to listen to Metallica. I, I told my Alexa to play me some Metallica. Yeah. Next thing I know, it plays me some ACDC, and I was like, okay, yeah. I, I, I can I bump like to this. ACDC. I'm good, I'm good. And then, it, and then it gives me some Guns N' Roses, and then it throws me for a loop, bro. It throws me Bon Jovi. <laughs> and I, I, um, bon I Jovi, unplugged bro. that Alexa and stuck it in the kitchen drawer. I, so. love, I, I, love, I love Bon Jovi, bro. I'm going to be 80s hair band music. Is, I mean, I, is really my I like Bon Jovi, but not not, the, when, not when I'm trying to listen to Metallica. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clean. I'm trying to, you know, if yeah. I'm cleaning, I'm listening to Metallica or like uh, Rage Against the Machine or something. Yeah. I went through a big hair metal phase. Not love so much it. anymore. Dude, also, we forgot about Audio Slave. Yeah, that's, that's a little later. Yeah, I mean, it's also Chris Cornell, and, but yeah. And Tom but Morello. Tom Morello's Brad beast. Wilk. And yep. uh, it was like pretty much like Chris Cornell and then Rage Against the Machine. Yep. Like those were yep. all the people that were brought I saw Bad know. Company on that list. That used to be yeah. my favorite band. Yeah, I, I didn't know they were considered. I never thought about them as a super group. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Rogers, who else? Uh, Paul what? Rogers, Simon Kirk, Nick oh, Rouse. Oh, Nick Rouse from, from uh, Mott uh, uh, the Hoople. Yeah. Yep. 
Oh, wow. I've never heard of them. Never heard of them either. No, I, I went through a big bad oh, company wow. phase. I don't know if you remember that, Lambert. But I was wearing bad company t-shirts and everything yeah. at school every yeah. day. Like, I don't know why. I had a couple cassettes that I found my parents. I feel like as a there. kid, when you find, as a, as, a, as a young kid, like you find, or like a teenager, you find like old music that you're like, wow, this is yeah. old, but this is different. Yeah. Like you just lock onto it. That's why I, I, I grew up with James Taylor, Jim Whoa. Croce, yeah. and, and John Denver and those types of guys. Uh, because of that, it's totally a, a different subject, but it, it really brings in what what you know we've talked about before, and kind of what what you're talking about right now is I had this talk the other day. You know, for me, like my one of my favorite bands of all time is is Doctor Hook and the Medicine Show. Oh, and how yeah. I got that was I found that like in my parents' cassette tapes and just started rocking it all the time. And, and, you know, mom had such great taste in music. I always had to make sure and steal her music. Yeah, and, and you know, you hear it in the car. But, you know, nowadays, think about this now. Kids today, they get in the car with their parents. Those AirPods go in. Yep. They're listening yep. to their music. You know, I talk to my students all the time about, like, whether or not they heard this or this, some of my older music, and they've never heard it. Yeah. It's not just that they don't like it. They've never heard it because they have their music at their beck and call at all times. And while Always. that sounds like a great thing, it keeps you from getting those those outside influences that we're so used to. Yeah. And that's where, like, I miss a game. We've talked about this game forever. I miss a great game like a Guitar Hero or Rock Band where it exposes young kids to older music, to different music. I, I'd take one right now. Give me a give me an old guy one where I get to play music that I've never heard of before because it's come out in the last 10 years. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah Dr. Hook. Goal. I don't know the one song by Dr. Hook, and it's a cover of the Rolling Stone. Yeah. But I sang that on an, an edition of YouTube Idol. If I don't know if you remember that. It was trying to – it was a spinoff of American Idol. It was just for YouTube. You had to send nope. videos in. I don't remember that. That's I, I dude, auditioned I love YouTube. for it in like 2011, 2012. Wow. Uh, so I was, I was still releasing that, songs. That's my karaoke gym. If I'm doing karaoke, that's what I'm hitting. I can, really? I can do I, I know every word to it. Uh, oh, yeah. Crazy. It, it's such a great song, but yeah. I I didn't make the cut, and uh, <laughs> it, it never saw the light of day because <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame it on the speech impediment, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What Sylvia's mother? You never heard of Sylvia's mother? That's no. a great one too. No, I'll look it up because I love that. That's a great one. Sylvia's Damon. mother's really good. Um, well, my favorite one is uh, Queen of the Silver Dollar. Okay. That's a great one. Queen of the Silver, never heard that either. Yeah, hey, oh, everybody great. who's tuned in, check that out. For yeah, real. yeah, absolutely. I love Doctor Hook. So also we got Mad Season. So this was um, Mike McCready. Is that his name from Pearl Jam or Mike McCready? McCready. Then you got Lane Staley. Okay. Barrett Martin from the Screaming Trees and John Baker uh, Saunders. Okay. From the walkabout. So that's another super group that I had no idea about. Blind Faith. We got Eric Clapton. Yeah. Yep. Ginger yep. Baker. Steve Winwood. And Rick Gretsch or Greck. So you got know. Cream and Company. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty and much. Cream, Cream was kind of a super group, too, yeah. in, yeah. to begin with. 100%. So. Then yeah. Got Crosby, Crosby Stills, Stills Nash and Young. Young. Yep. And then we got Them Crooked Vultures. Dave Grohl. Holy what? crap. What? What's happening? Josh Hom from uh, Home from Queens of the Stone Age and John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. Yeah. yeah. What? This I gotta find this. I gotta find this. I've them. never heard this, it. We gotta clip this, like for real. This all is right, crazy, all right. man. And then third, we have Temple of the Dog. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. That's crazy. Never knew about them. Cream. There you go. Literally, yep. you already and know. Number one, the Wilburys. Travis. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Best of all time. <laughs> yes. Jeff that Lynn. Is, uh, how are you going to have Handle With Care in the line? You don't have Tweeter and the Monkey Man. That song was so goofy, but so good. Yeah. When I was first getting Man. into the Warburys, everyone would uh, like, oh, they suck. Uh, have you heard Tweeter and the Monkey Man? It sucks. I'm like, I love oh, it. That's like the best song. I love it. It's, it's just a have it's fun like a song. It's a cult classical yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a like have fun. It's under, a have if, fun. If you understand, you do. If you know, you know. Handle With Care is a really good, just great song. But yeah, I mean, Tweeter and the Monkey Man is kind of like one of those, yeah. you know. They weren't offense. around for a long time. No. No, Roy Orbison died shortly after the group's 1988 debut yep. hit Shelves. They carried on for one more album in 1990, but they all felt the it no. just wasn't the same without Orbison and folded the group. His, his yeah. crooning on top of all of their sounds was just, oh, God, magic. Bob, magical. So also on this day That's in entertainment crazy. history, Tom Petty, man. 1989. Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire hits number one in America, baby. Billy Joel. Daddy's home, you know? Daddy's home. Billy That's... Joel is one of the ugliest individuals you will ever see. But that man can sing like an angel. That's a lot. Man. He, does me. Not, he does not look like how he sounds. Yeah. No. When you look at him, you're like, that dude did not sing no. this. Like, look at this 
crazy looking dude, yep. you know. Had a super hot wife. Had a couple super hot wives. So, like he was just crushing it, dude. Truly crushing it. It's like it's like Ozzy. Like he's the most like. Uh, he's incoherent, and yes. she put a up. microphone in front of him. Or Crushing. Willie Nelson. I love Willie Nelson. Yes. I don't know half of what he's saying sometimes. No, 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 no. no. But That's the way he's I... got a unique sound. I mean, Bob Dylan, I mean, back to Bob Dylan, I, I don't have a clue what he's saying half the time, but I love it. Yeah, same with James Taylor. I don't want to go see James Taylor before he passes away because he sounds gonna, so bad It's going to ruin now. it for you. Yeah. It's yeah. Ruin it I want to remember James Taylor for it's, what I it's remember. It's like now. seeing Axl Rose now. Yeah. It's just... Well, uh, yeah, he looks... Vince Neil, yeah, oh, just yeah. yikes. I, I want to see him before he passes sure. away, but but I you don't. go see Slash, go see somebody yeah. who still looks good and can still like rip, you know. Uh, so it's crazy you said Ozzy because on this day in 2003, Ozzy Osbourne crashes his quad bike, breaking several bones, including his collarbone and fracturing vertebrae, fr- fracturing a vertebrae. The injuries are considerable but not life threatening. He so. wrecked so bad the bat flew out his mouth. <laughs> Have, have you also? There's a famous video of him singing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." No. Have you? You no. need to look this up 100%. because it is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It's like, <laughs> That's uh, uh, the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Oh man, that's crazy. So we also have another thing I was going to throw into the episodes, and before I do that. Um, I want to go ahead and let everybody know, thanks for tuning in once again. Thanks for the support. Make sure to stop by on Casey King's page and show some love to him. He's got videos of him wrestling. He has funny posts. He's a great guy for sure. Uh, make sure to go onto YouTube and hit up Together FTR. You can also search the song on YouTube. You don't have to go to the channel if you just want to hurry up and play it. DTM by Nugs B stands for doing too much. I really appreciate everybody who's tuned in to everything. It means a lot to me. Thank you all so much for real. Uh, so the next thing I was going to go over, I got I'm going to bring back the quotes of the day. Okay. I'm you know cuz I rocked that for a while and people yep. loved it. They really did. I wish I would have done it earlier, but I, you know, we get into the flow, you know, things happen. What can you do? So a great quote that I found today is the struggle you are in today is developing the strength you need tomorrow. Absolutely. I got to hit that one more time. The struggle you are in today is developing the strength you need tomorrow. I I think it's beautiful because we've had so many conversations about who we are as individuals are are built off of the foundation of the struggles you go through, the hard times in your life and what make you, not not the heights of your life, you know, how you handle and what you learn from your mistakes and your struggles. That's it. That's that's the person you're going to become. Yeah. Whether you sink or swim. Whether you turn into a diamond or you turn into dust under yep. pressure, yep. period. I feel like that's a great thing to live by. Like, let that go, go ahead and bring those on. Yep. Let me let me get some of those. Let me get some character development. Sprinkle a little bit of that on my life, baby. Yep. I need that. I like that. I need that to grow. And I feel like that's a truth. That's truly a thing that can really resonate with people very well. So the next one I got is it's. Um, it's a quote by Dolly Parton, actually. Mm. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Absolutely. Kind of going the same kind same, of thought, same kind of idea. Yeah. That's yeah. where I went with yeah. it. I was yeah. going on that perseverance, yeah. that truly achieving what you can, getting out of your comfort zone. Let that rain hit you. Get a little wet. It ain't going to hurt you. Like It's all good, you know? I like that you use the word perseverance just because, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like that's who make, that's what makes you. That's a, I tend to use the – when I'm talking to students who are going through a hard time, I, I've told this with you before, that yep. like I, I talk about, you know, be a katana, be a blade that is forged through the hottest fire and the and beating of a hammer. And, you know, what you go through in that forge forges you into the hardest, sharpest steel there is. You know, you don't get that way by – just chilling and everything being peachy keen, you Amen, know. So. Baby. Yeah. Amen, baby. Amen. I love there's it. A, Go. There's a, there's a good quote by Monty Williams, who's a coach of the Phoenix Suns, mm-hmm. and I don't know if he's the original. Uh, who have, who said sure, it originally? Sure, yeah. I know you couldn't get through this episode without mentioning the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> hey, every time I get the chance, but he always said he always tells the team, "Everything you need is on the other side of hard." Yeah, and, and, and that goes that. along the same. I same love guidelines. That. Absolutely, I love that. That's yeah. tremendous. Like that truly is. Anybody who's listening right now, if you're going through it right now, just know that it can't rain all the time. Shout out the crow. You feel me? Shout yeah. out the crow. Eric Draven, baby. Let's <laughs> go. We thought, and I got the last one I got is also going in this uh, direction. The good life is a process, not a state of being. It is a direction, not a destination. Yep. And that's a quote by Carl Rogers. 
I like it. So I, I, like I love it. the quotes of the day. I think it's a lot of fun, man. I feel, and also I'm gonna do uh, one fact of the day as well. Okay. The hottest spot on the planet is in Libya, where a temperature of 136 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded on September 13th, 1922. While hotter spots have likely occurred in other parts of the planet at other times, this is the most scorching temperature ever formally recorded by a weather station. Uh, it gets pretty hot sitting here right next to you, too, <laughs> you know, just so we're all aware. I'm up here screaming. I'm just like, you know, doing Nah, bro. This, I mean, you know? 122 degrees Fahrenheit? Nah, bro. 136. 136? What did I get? 130. Oh, no, 1922. Oh, that's no, what I made up. Yeah. 1922. Uh, I don't have any hair anymore, but I'm actually a redhead. I would be purple <laughs> and crispy if that was the Literally, case. man. Literally. Florida's well, too hot for me, so yeah. I'm going to stay up here. Yeah, just stay where it gets a little chilly sometimes. You know, I like the cold, man. I, really I love do. the cold. I like mm-hmm. the cold, man. I prefer the cold because you can always put on more clothes. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can all, if you get naked, you're naked. That's yeah. it. You can't like, and, you're just and naked. arrested. You literally, like, <laughs> you're, like you're literally. I've you, heard. No, I don't know that from experience, know. but I've heard I, that. I like the cold more. It's, it's more satisfying to me to walk into a heated house than it is when it's cold outside. Than cold it is, house. Yeah, when it's hot versa. outside. That's a dude. That's a great analogy. That's why I, I, I like it so much more. Yeah. Rather, yeah. And like when, when you're in a house that the heat's just cranking, mm-hmm. don't you always feel like you're just like you don't even have anything on you, but you feel like you're just snuggled up yes. with a blanket. <laughs> I'm so comfy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> My thing is also with the cold. The only thing I don't like about the cold is when it's so cold, it takes your breath. When you go, yeah. you're like, mm, and yeah. then you, it hurts. The cold hurts. The it heat does. won't hurt you really. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't feel that like aching, bone wrenching like pain that you get from. Stay hydrated. You'll be you fine. Yeah. Here's the thing too: is like, yeah, stay hydrated. Yeah. Absolutely. If I get really, really cold and I go into a warm place to warm up, mm-hmm. I warm up pretty quick and then I'm done. Yeah. I feel good the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. If I get really hot, like if I go out and cut the grass in the middle of summer, my 300-pound self, I come back in the house in the air conditioning, and it takes me an hour and a half to, like, quit sweating. I'm yeah. done for the day. Literally. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. playing my day around that. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's the thing, too. And, like, also, for those out there who are not aware of this, I just had to tell somebody the other day who was talking about being at work and, like, being, like, dying real hot, sweating. He was like, yeah, I just always chug cold water. I was like, never do that ever that will kill you it, like not actually really kill can. you but it'll make you sick yeah. you will throw up immediately it, it, messes can, your, it can kill you it too. can yeah it messes with your equilibrium like you'll get vertigo instantly if you do it too fast because you have to think about it anytime you go to the doctor and you they need to get your temperature down they never put anything inside of you besides medicine there's no cold going inside of you yeah. they get to cold on the outside. the outside so you can't put cold in your body when you're burning up no, you, you you can do little sips every now and then. Yes, but like after I wrestle a match or something, yeah, you don't chug room temp Just water. Don't chug water ever. <laughs> room temp <laughs> water chug. <laughs> like, but, uh, I feel like room temp. I can smash on it real quick. Uh, but yeah, if you uh, like, if I wrestle a match and I'm boning up, I usually wait about half hour before yeah. I cool down. Hundred percent. Wipe that's, off and <clears throat> that's a, a very a uh, diligent whatever, way to yeah. look at. Like that's a diligent time. You know, like that's very legit. I feel about like. the same amount of exercise for me. Like when I walk up a set of stairs, <laughs> I have to do the same thing. That's about as much cardio as I get. So it's about the same. About the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's about the same. <laughs> I probably sweat about the same amount. Uh, yeah. Walking <laughs> up the stairs as you do, wrestling well, the whole match. Are 100. If you're, I well, mean, you're in what building six now? I'm building building three. You're back in building three. I'm back okay, in building okay. three. You were so, in building six. So you got a little It's about ways. 800 stairs, I'm pretty sure. You know what I'm, I mean? Like, I've been, especially if you come up from the back parking uh, lot. Like, if you park in the back parking lot for up building two, you got those stairs that bring you up the hill. Then you got the next one yep, by building yep. two. Then you got the next one. And that's where we three. have to park. So, you yeah. feel me? That's teachers. So, Don't like, tell me about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get a bear and other teachers trying to have a conversation with me. I'm like, hold on. I'll talk to you later, man. Like, you know, yeah. you know it's bad this. when that's like the premier sledding destination in the city. Yeah. Is that yeah. hill? Yeah. yeah. Is that hill, dude? I've been, I've been really trying to get us a ski lift. Lift up oh. from the teacher's parking lot, but you know, Escalator. yeah, like, literally, come on, let's let's fund it's this, rough. let's do some fundraising. You know how many really? times that I have gotten off work and went and parked my car up at the top of campus in the middle of campus so I don't have to walk as far 100. and then forget 100%. and then walk after wow. work at night, walk oh, all the way down the hill to the teacher's parking lot and be like, Where's my car? And then You're have to walk after academic team practice, yeah, like oh, in, yeah, in the okay. evenings, gotcha, and I'll have to gotcha. walk all the way back up to the top of campus to yeah. my car. 
And then I just sit in the car for about 10 minutes and hate myself. Literally. Dude, so. shout out academic team for real. You all it's are my jam. crushing. It's my jam. You all are it, right? crushing and are always crushing. So proud of Ashland for real. Also, shout out to Oakview Comets out here for That's crushing right. as well. Because their their academic team is crushing. Mm -hmm. Sissy's placed four times on all four meets. She's crushing it. But um, there's some other kids on there that I know. Also, um, Carter Grant, he's crushing it. Desmond Kazee, like – these kids are destroyed. I know these kids, so nope. I can shout them out. I'm not going to say other people's kids' name because that's not respectful. And But I know these kids and their parents very, very well. Shout out to them because they're crushing it's, it. It's always awesome to see kids working hard in yes. both athletics and academics. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, we actually had a scrimmage tonight that's before awesome. I came here. Yeah, so. that's killer, man. Heck yeah. Uh, look, the thing is, is you're, always, you're such a great coach, and, like, I know – Here's my thing, man. I don't know if I – I know I give you – I send you your flowers plenty, and I send you your roses, but I'm going to give them to you right now, man, because you are a great person all around. You're a great father. You're a great coach. And, like, now I'm coaching too. I mean, granted, I'm not on your level. Like, I'm fourth or fifth grade basketball you know, I don't for coach girls. a sport, but I always tell people well, academic team is my sport. It is. You know, my kids, we but practice like, five days a week, two me? hours a day. We put that's, it in. That's what I'm saying. Y'all grind. Yeah. But, like, I can appreciate you more because, I mean, I'm, I'm – you know, this is my first season ever coaching – Anybody. I've never coached in a league. I just played ball myself, like, and played until – Well, I'll tell you the most team. important thing as a coach, you know, like I said, I'm not an athletic coach, but it's all the same in, 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 in a lot of ways, is you have to make those kids know two things. Know that hard work is going to get them everywhere they want to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And know, know that you are there for them when they mess up and when they succeed. You know, I, I do that with all my all my kids, and my kids are willing to, to practice anytime I want to. When I don't want to practice, they want to practice. Mm -hmm. You know, we create a family environment, and, you know, they love each other, and they'll, they'll run through a brick wall for me and their team, you know. That's and that's what you want with the team, you yes. know, whether you're, you're, whether you're doing, you know, elementary basketball, basketball or, or you're yeah. doing academic team, you're doing coaching, hey, you know, I'm with wrestling you know. or something. All you, all you got to do is, is, is teach a, a love for what you do, and the rest will teach itself. Yes. Yep. A love and, and, and some ownership. Take some ownership for your place, mm -hmm. you know, for your team, for – you know, your spot in the ring, take yeah. ownership for it and, and put in the hard work and, and make them love doing that work. Let's go. It's all good from there. Let's go. And that's beautiful, man. That really is because, like I like I just said, um, this is my first time ever coaching, and I plan on coaching them next year too because I only have two fifth-grade girls on the team right now. The rest are fourth grade. So if they want to play next year, I would love to be their coach again. And honestly, they were looking good tonight. We have our first game Saturday. I was running them girls ragged, man. I had them getting right, you know. Like, they were running up down the court. We're doing full court. Then we did half-court scrimmage, full-court scrimmage, getting the flow of everything. Because some of these girls have never played, including my daughter. This yeah. is her first year playing ball. And I think it's really awesome once, you know, and I've told you that for her first year of playing ball, me being her head coach, like, I think that's going to be something. It's not thinking. I know that's going to be something we'll be talking about for the next it's Memories, years. bro. It's something it's memories. That, will, that is a bond you cannot break. 20 like years can. from now, she won't be able to tell you how many games they won. No. But she'll be able to tell you fun stories about times my when you – My dad know, yep. was my first coach. Yep. And hopefully I'd coach her all the way up. I'd yep. love to do that. Like, I really would. And, I mean, if, and, and even if, even not being – you know, not if it's, it, if you're not the dad, it, it's it's still that same thing of, of you know, the things that you take back from your teachers. time in sports and those kind of things yep. are, are the silly stories and the fun times. 100%. So. It's, it's beautiful. It's really a beautiful thing, and I'm just so glad that I'm a part of it. Yep. And it's I, – I mean, I've changed my whole life around it just to make sure I can do this for them and really put that out there and really make sure they have a great time yep. and learn some stuff. We're talking about coaching a lot. Uh, Casey King, I mean, what it, uh, are what are some things from, or, or some people or some things that really hit you that from coaches that have uh, – in, in your wrestling career that have really – got you like really stuck with you not just the, the bumps and the winds and the, the moves or those things but what are some of the, the lessons from you well the uh there's always i've always been told there's two things guaranteed to make you better is criticism and repetition mm. uh guaranteed to make you better at every everything facet of life. literally uh, everything but you, especially in professional yeah. wrestling that's the only way you get better and you get better but working with people who are better than you mm -hmm. uh it's the old saying that uh if you're in, if the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room the best wrestler in the ring, you're in the wrong ring. Yeah. S same thing. That's a great sign. Um, yeah, I, I was trained by legends, and Bobby Blaze and Jillian Hall. Absolutely. Two Ashland locals mm -hmm. yeah. who made the big time and made a living off professional wrestling. That's awesome. Who really instilled the professionalism into me. Um, it, 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 the professional part of wrestling is just as important as the wrestling part of professional yeah. wrestling. Uh, if you're a professional, 
you can go as far as you want to. Yeah. The wrestling will come in time. The 100%. Pro- professional part's the hard part. Professional. And also, another thing I feel like, and obviously I'm not a wrestler, but I'm, you know, I've, I know a lot of uh, the people who wrestle around here, and I feel like a lot of it has to do with just getting a character. Getting a good character can really take you a long way. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a character and sticking to it and just yep. living it. Like, I feel like that because people like that, whether you're funny or you're the mean guy or you're mm-hmm. the. And you got to have one that makes sense for you, yes, too. That, yes, that, that yes. has an it's essence of who you are. That's, that's another thing that goes into it. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's, uh, that's a lot of the reason I transitioned into comedy wrestling and it, it being a funny guy is because, uh, I mean, I've always been the scrawny kid with a speech impediment. His deaf in one ear has scoliosis. And, <laughs> you know, like. I was never going to be this big. Yourself, you weren't going like, to come out like The Undertaker yeah, or something. I, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't I, come out like Kane, you no, know, and that and type I've, of vibe. I've experimented with steroids and stuff, but, like, <laughs> it's not. I can tell. Yeah. Uh, so right before I came back, I mean, my first match back in April, I was 220 pounds. Wow. Uh, and I, I was looking good, yeah. but I didn't like the way I looked. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and I just came back from knee surgery and had all that extra weight on my yeah. knee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now I'm about 185, 190, right depending on. on the day. Also, uh, you're you're tall enough to where that weight, either way, can look good as yeah, well. It, being this tall is a bad thing, though. For it wrestling, is. It is because you like all these big guys in wrestling. I'm taller than. Yeah. Like uh, straight up, all these big. Mo- well, not like Kane and Undertaker. Sure, guys. but like you know, in like the Cena. Yeah, uh, like any of those, or guys. any indie or pro, like straight yeah. up, like you know, it's usually shorter dudes that are stacked. Yeah. Because like yep. if you're my height. 220, you better be jacked. Yeah. Like, you have to be yep. stout. If I'm weighing 220, I'm not looking good. I'm in bad <laughs> shape unless I'm jacked. Yeah. You know, so uh, you yeah, can't it's... you can't rock. It, the weight and height is a real thing. Like I always yeah, I always thought that with my size or my height. I'm on 6'5". Yeah. I always thought I'd be like the Undertaker build. I ended up looking more like Paul Bearer. But, uh, <laughs> it is what it is, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I wish I could do a good Paul Barrow, but I can't. Uh, I know. I, yeah, I, I really so wanted to do it, but I couldn't do it. Yeah, so speaking of wrestling, I want, I'm going to go down the line here. I want my man right here to give me your top three wrestlers of all time. What do you of got, Landon? All time. All time. Give me top three of them, because I'll, I'll name mine. Uh, okay, after we, are, are we, we'll we'll we're man. talking here. We're talking just in general. we talking... We're talking in general. We, we, okay, in general, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm a bit of I like the technical. I also like you know the, a bit of the story too. Um, I'm more of a WCW man. I'm a huge fan of. Let's see. Hopefully this thing go over bad. I loved Chris Benoit. I don't care what happened oh, after he was done. But I loved deep. Chris Benoit. We're deep. Casey King does Ooh. not endorse this message. Ooh. Yeah, I can't help it, man. He wasn't a good dude, but. Ooh. Technically, he was an amazing wrestler. He, 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 he was up. an amazing he wrestler. Really, you have to give the technically. credit where it was due. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it goes in. I'm, I'm going to drop something out here for you as well. It's like saying, it's, it's like separating the art from the artist almost. Yes, yes. Because I will watch the Cosby show right now. Yeah. We can put it on, and I will I'm jam I'm still going to laugh. Yeah. I'm going to make some gonna jokes laugh. while I'm watching I'm, it. I'm going to joke about him yep. being a p- terrible person, yep. and I'm not endorsing anything he did. Obviously, I don't subscribe to being a terrible person. But at the same time, it's like saying, you know, the whole thing of Michael Jackson. Like, you don't, you're not going to bump Thriller? You're not? Yeah. You yeah, know, right. like you're not gonna listen to R. Kelly because I promise you, if I play Ignition Ignition Remix, yeah. you're gonna dance. That's good stuff. You're gonna sing it, yeah. and that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. I don't care what you say. People have to realize in real life. If we knew all the dark secrets of all entertainment, there would be no entertainment. No. Period. We just don't know about what's happening. Your favorite people like Ellen. We found out that she was a dirtbag too, you know? Yep. All these people who are squeaky clean on the mic and squeaky clean in front of camera and they're just great saints are actually terrible people because we're all yep. human. We are flawed. They get weird though, and yeah. they got. Chris Benoit the... was not a good dude. My bad. My no, bad. No, 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 no. You were absolutely right. He was a great wrestler. Was, I no, used no. him on SmackDown I, I t- constantly. Yeah. That's why I said constantly. when we talk about him because because I mean technically he was he was a really good wrestler. Exactly, um, dude. One it's of like, the best ever. I mean, it's, it's like saying you wouldn't technical. watch a Weinstein film. Yeah. Production. It's, yeah. It's, Everybody's yeah. watched them. Yep. You can go back all the way from uh, what was it Shooters with yep. uh, Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Was it Shooters? Is that what it was called? I think so. Yeah. 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 No, it wasn't, wasn't it? I swear it was. Something. I got to look it up. I, I love that movie. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you my other two while you're looking that up. Absolutely, that cool? yeah. All right. So I'm going to say my other two. One, just because it's a big part of my childhood, is Kevin Von Erich. 
love the Bonnets. I don't know who that is. Texas you Wrestling Federation. You all just put me, on, game, about put me on game to it. Talking to Wrestling Federation, a group in Texas. So that was a big part. Um, for my last one, God, it's tough, man. As a kid, I, I was never into the, like the big stars that everybody loved. But really? the one that was a big star that I always just could not help but yeah. absolutely love was Sting. Dude, uh, Sting was I'm cool. Not talking, He's cool, man. I'm not he talking. So cool. He still is. I'm He's not really talking cool. Crow Sting though. Like I oh, like Crow. Super Sting. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. Crow Sting. Yeah. yeah. I thought with he the, was cool. With like the the one side of his face painted up. Bleach blonde yes. hair. Yes. Bleach blonde hair. Yes. Yeah. I don't even remember that Sting. Literally. He's, I mean, you know, you got great. You, you know, you got a great character when you are a superstar and your finishing move yeah. is a splash in the corner. Yeah. It literally yeah. would he would just run and splash them in the corner. That was it. Just run and just jump on. Like, you you seriously were like 190 pounds and you just splashed on. And them. he's still Literally. going today. That's, That's crazy. What's so he's impressive. 65 he's be, years yeah. old and he's jumping off of balconies. It's impressive, it's truly impressive. And the thing is, uh, I want to transition. Owen Hart wishes he could do that. <laughs> I said it. Casey King does not endorse this message. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and break to me because we're gonna save the wrestler for last, the best for last. <laughs> Because he's going to go on indie, and he's going to go on pro as well. Okay. So I'm going to say all-time favorite wrestlers. And granted, most people who have listened to this podcast or hung out with me, I don't – I have never really liked wrestling. Only thing I really dug about wrestling was SmackDown. I played SmackDown like crazy. I loved it. And it was my jam. SmackDown versus Raw was my yeah. jam. I mean, all the wrestling there's games. Not, those, there's no video games better than wrestling video games. Like, They're I do, so I good. And what was the one on 64 that had uh, – No Mercy. No mercy. Yes. NWO yes. versus uh, ECW, well, right? The WCW versus NWO was another was. one. That's what it was. Yeah. That one was, and then No yeah. Mercy was real no good. No Mercy was, is the one that's considered like the best so ever. So good. And uh, then SmackDown came out tremendous. Yeah. But I say top three wrestlers of all time. It's got to be Stone Cold. Yeah. It's got to be Stone Cold. 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 Stone Cold.
You could never see him do that as the Undertaker because old school. Yeah, yeah, it was just it was cool to see. And it was like you wouldn't see the Undertaker walking across the ropes. He's yeah. seven foot tall doing yeah. that. He's it's, literally yeah. six twenty, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. dude is six foot twenty. We, yeah. we can't be doing it out here. I, went, I remember the first time I saw him do it, I was just in shock. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, but Undertaker's number two for sure, just because he was just such another great character. That was because I was playing the games. I wasn't watching, so I was their character to me in the game was as beefed up as it could be. In real life, you can't beef up a character like that. Like it's not. It's like it's like watching Star Wars. And then watching Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah. The Clone Wars is, it, you can do so much more with a cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with video games, yep. bro. On yep. Clone Wars, Anakin was doing so much more. Obi Wan, you know, uh, like everybody was doing so much more. Yoda, everybody. But then the movies, it's still great. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, nerd, as everybody knows. I love it. But the cartoon, you are limitless. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with video games. So their characters were beefed up. Yeah. And, and I think you keep saying, him and beef, it may, may you use the word beef with Undertaker. I immediately think of surprise. In my in my opinion, the greatest arc of him ever mm-hmm. was him versus Jake the Snake Roberts. I don't remember that, that whole beef <laughs> was amazing, yeah. amazing. That's way before like Jake your time. That's probably before either of your time. It was before my time for sure. But I mean, it was a, such. A, he was new. That was yeah. back. That, we were talking early Undertaker Paul Bearer. Was, was Undertaker early. was pretty new as Undertaker. Mm-hmm. But Jake the Snake, definitely. I don't think he's ever been new. I'm pretty sure they he came out when they invented wrestling. Um, <laughs> he came uh, out with the mustache. Yeah, it was like yeah. him, him and Terry Funk, and that was pretty much it. But uh, uh, that's it. He he invented snakes. That's, a, that's yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, that's actually, yeah. Fact. That's it, yeah. bro. Yeah, I mean, he, he was there. He yep. was there. But, yeah, I, that's the one I always remember. Yeah. So. so for three, I'm probably going to go with either. It's hard to say, but I'm probably going to go with Rey Mysterio Jr. or – He was flashy. God, he was, he, was, he was cool to watch. He was flashy. I'm going to say Rey Mysterio Jr. or – I hate to say it, man, but John Cena just because he is just that guy. Don't hate to say it. He's the greatest he's, of all time. He literally is that guy. He's I, the greatest of all dude time. Made his I've own never rap. seen him. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he's invisible. Hey, yeah, I, you never seen the guy. You never seen the guy. I had to. Sorry, you guys. To. You had to drop it. The thing, the, the thing is, never seen that guy. Truly, when you drop your own rap song to come out to, I gotta respect you just on principle. That whole bro. album is a banger. Fire! He was spitting hard <laughs> bars, dude. Right now, by John Cena, is a it's a Straight classic. Straight up, isn't he from New Hampshire or Connecticut? He's a West New West Newberry, Massachusetts. Okay, Matt, he's from Mass. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got you. Yeah, because he talks about Mass in him. Yeah, you're right. I knew he was up from New England. I couldn't remember if it was New Hampshire, Connecticut, or one of those. Yeah. Um, but John Cena's right there, man. Just because even even when people talk about the strongest uh, per- wrestler they've ever played, him. Yeah. Straight up. He's a freak. Picked up the great Khali. He's a freak. And he Peacemaker, a freak I got I to gotta say, Peacemaker is the coolest fire. thing ever. That's right. a so. great he's, show. He's a f- hilarious actor. Hilarious. Too. Hilarious. Yeah. Literally hilarious. Have you guys ever seen, um, what was it? Uh, it had uh, Lil Rel in it. It had, uh, like, the vacation partner something. Nope. Oh, man. It was so funny. With, with John Cena? Yes. John Cena was in it. It's uh, Vacation. I don't know. Vacation Friends, 2021. I have not. Dude, you have to watch this immediately. It is hilarious. It's got Lil Rel, Meredith Hagner. Uh, who else is in it? King Bach. He's another stand up comedian. I, I know John Cena. That's all I know. That's, that's all worse I, know. I know. You don't know who Lil Rel is? I don't. No. You ever seen Get Out? Yes. yes. That's his best oh, friend. Oh, his buddy that comes his, and picks his, him up. His, 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 gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Uh, what, uh, what are they? Uh, FT, uh, he's like uh, a security guard or something. No, isn't he, he no? works at the airport. Um, oh, oh, oh. He's uh, TSA, uh, T- TSA. Is that what it is? T- yeah, he's TSA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah then yeah. get out. That's Lil Rel. Okay. Uh, he's hilarious, man. Okay. I love him. But that's, that's mine. So now we're going we're gonna to kick it to, you know, best for last to Casey King. First, let's hear your top three indie wrestlers. Who are you know te- by technicality never went to like the WWE or like TNA or or WCW the, or ECW. unsigned yeah exactly okay better way to put it uh shoot you can include yourself I mean you're I, a dog. I'm not gonna you're, you're my favorite I'm, you know, I, appreciate heart, I appreciate that Casey King's that. my Casey King's favorite Casey King's my yeah. top three you feel yeah. me let's go I'm only I'm only 28 there's still time that, there's still time for me to go to the Fed yeah exactly let's uh, go God, I'm 28 I feel old right now <laughs> I'm 26 let's go 
Let's go, young lads in here. I hate you both. I had you both in. <laughs> I had you both in class. Literally, bro. Him two years before me. You know. The best indie guy. He he got signed. He he was signed to both, but he's known as an independent wrestler, <laughs> and he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. He's the reason I'm a wrestler. It's Colt Cabana. Okay. Um, I've heard of him. Up his right Art of Wrestling podcast is really the first sports podcast to exist. Really? Uh, he's the reason AEW came around because he, he started with uh, with another company. Sports uh, podcast? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can't think of any. I mean, unless you count like uh, what's uh, uh, Steven and Skip, you know, like yeah. they were doing that. But that wasn't like a podcast. It was more of like a ESPN talk show type deal. Yeah. It wasn't set up like that. So yeah, I can't think of any other ones, like, man. Have you all heard of AEW? Yeah. The new wrestling? Oh uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so yeah. he started uh, a company called Pro Wrestling Tees, which I'm, I'm on, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Casey King, if you want to buy some t-shirts. Sick. Yeah, go buy some uh, merch. I totally forgot. We're going to be shouting that out, baby. <laughs> every five minutes, you throw that out, baby. We, we're plugging every time. I totally so, forgot about so that. So that's Colt Cabana's but, doing, and that led to the Young Bucks making enough money and Kenny Omega making enough money to start AEW. Tony Khan did, too, but they ran all out with their own money sure. uh, based on Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana is responsible for it. pretty much every independent wrestler that's being awesome. able to make a living. In professional wrestling, as independence, he's a big fella. He, he's a big guy. He's a big he fella. Is, uh, he is my he, he's my Jesus. Okay. Um, and and hey, praise talks, the Lord. You feel yeah. me? Praise <laughs> the Lord. You feel There's me? A lot of talk, I'm in talks with a lot of companies for, for Colt Cabana versus Casey King to happen in 2023. Dude. If that happens, let's go. Uh, I mean, I'm, there. I'm gonna be plugging that. We're there. Yeah, yeah. I'm we gonna be are plugging there. that. That's You're my... coming straight back on the podcast. We're plugging it everywhere. I'm yes. sharing it. That's my dream I match. You, Hopefully, it happens in for ASW in Madison, West Virginia. It's my home promotion. We're pulling up. Um, yeah, it's only about an I'm hour pulling and a half drive from here. Like, oh, bro, yeah, so, we're pulling up. Yeah, like, Colt seriously. Cabana is, is, is he's signed to AEW right now. He was signed to WWE as Scotty Goldman. Okay. Um, but he's he's known as an independent professional wrestler. He's like he's like the OG of it. It's in the yes. sense of like. He's almost like Allen Iverson. Like, he didn't get a, a ring. He didn't get a championship, but he's the GOAT. You know what I mean? Yeah. AI, same way. This dude didn't do, you know, he didn't go to Undertaker's level, but he's the GOAT on the underground. He's yeah. the indie. He's that yeah. dude who, you know, still was making moves, but didn't get a ring type deal. Yeah, same thing with AI. A, you know? a lot of wrestlers today owe everything to Colt Cabana. That's and, what's um, up. Yeah, Colt Cabana, he, he's that guy. He has three movies called The Wrestling Road Diaries of okay. him traveling the roads. With uh, w- The first one has Daniel Bryan in it, who went on to make yep. a stardom. Sick. Um, yeah, there's, he does this traveling the roads, going to these small podunk towns, mm-hmm. independent wrestling. That's sick. And, uh, it's always it's fun. Just, if you're an independent wrestler, if you're a professional wrestler, you have to watch those. Yeah, it's, 100%. It's, it's my Bible. 100%. Uh, but Colt Cabana is number one for sure. Uh, Mike Quackenbush is another one. That's I, a sick name. <laughs> I love it. He's a. Uh, I don't think he's a very good guy. I think it came okay. out that he's a he's a pretty bad person. Art from the artist. Yeah, uh, you know but he he started a My company. My man started Chris Benoit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really Mike Quackenbush is a saint compared to Chris Benoit. <laughs> See, I was setting you up so that no matter who you said, it would I be appreciate good. that. I appreciate oh, like that. He took care of you. He took he took he took it on that one. He started a company called Chikara. And Chris Chikara, Benoit was a killer wrestler. He was. Yeah. He, he was. Gosh. Rest in peace, Nancy and Dan- Daniel. God rest your soul. Uh, Let's say a prayer in their name. Moment of silence. Pull one out. Uh, <laughs> pour out the water. Pull, pour one out. Oh, we're terrible. Uh, I am. It's yeah, horrible. So Mike Wackenbush started a, a company called Chikara Pro out of Redding, Pennsylvania. It's the Philadelphia area. And it was really a, like a PG, family-oriented, character-based independent show. Sick. And they were around until 2020 when it came out that Quack wasn't a very good guy. Oh, God. Uh, but he they had a good run for a long time, made a lot of money. Dude, it's always the guys who run the PG. It's yeah. always the guys that are the American dad. It's I'm always a, the guys who yeah. are involved in yeah. everything. It's terrible, and they're the weirdos, I man. literally call myself squeaky clean Casey King, so let's oh, – not God. all of us. Oh, not all of us. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a living cartoon in wrestling. Oh, like I'm gosh. the golden retriever of professional wrestling. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely right. But, and like, uh, yeah, go ahead. Continue, my friend. Yeah, well, Chikara was well, like uh, – you had dancing ice cream cones, wrestling ice cream cones. You had this guy named uh, Joe. Travis Cottonbelly, who I've become real good friends with after I wrestled him in 2018. Really? Um, who literally, his gimmick was the world's sweetest man. And so he didn't want to wrestle. 
So he'd rock you to his sleeper hold was rocking you like a baby. That's hilarious, <laughs> bro. That's it's, a uh, funny gimmick. Like that's yeah. a funny gimmick. Dude. Yeah. Like I like that. There's this guy named uh, I can't remember his first name. It's very very long. That's Crabtree. He's like an ancient old man. So you go to, you go to send him off the ropes and he just like staggers with his cane. That's walking funny, across bro. the room. That's hilarious. It's uh, Chikara's really got, got me back into wrestling because yeah. uh, I said John Cena's a goat. He's my favorite wrestler of all time. I'm sure we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that. But uh, I stopped watching wrestling because of John Cena, really. Really? Um, and now, I ha- since I got into the business, I have an all-new respect for him. Dude, he's But he's, he's literally Chikara brought me back into it with his – like, they did time-traveling storylines. That's and, hilarious. Like, That's it's awesome. Mike Quackenbush. And he was, well, he was like the indie guy before Colt Cabana, him and Reckless Youth and a couple other guys. Okay. Um, and another guy is Madman Pondo, who is a big deathmatch guy. Um He's been around. He's been in Backyard Wrestling 1 and 2, the video games. Uh, he's been in Five Star Pro Wrestling. I'm reading his book right now. It's very good. He's a local guy. I've wrestled for his company, IWA East Coast. He sold it uh, before I wrestled for him, but he was still there. I got to work with him there. That's awesome. Uh, he's a deathmatch guy. He's known to be one of the craziest guys ever. Um, but he's one of those guys who will do anything for you if he likes you. Like really? He'll put in, words, he'll put in a word with you, for you anywhere. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And he, he's just an indie guy. That's he looks just, like a crazy guy. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, he's crazy. He, I like him. It's a saw bat. It's a baseball bat with a saw blade on the end of it. I like him. And, he seems uh, like my type of people, man. Yeah, he's, he's got edge to him. I like that. <laughs> when it comes to independent guys, something. Madman is, is one, Pondo is one of the, the greatest Sick. ever. That's and, three uh, indies, yeah. So now let's hear. With you, I'm, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. Currently in the WWE, who's your top three? In the WWE, Roman Reigns is number one for he's sure. Crucial. He's he's crucial, man. He's gonna be top five ever. Yeah, at, that's true. When it's all said and done, he's Sami Zayn is another good one. Okay, who's uh, who's associated with Roman Reigns right he's now? The redheaded guy. That's Sami Zayn. That's okay. I yeah, like him. Yeah, I like yeah. him a lot. He's great. Yeah. And then my, as my favorite goes in the WWE right now, Austin Theory. Um, I've heard of him. Look him. I've probably seen him. But. Yeah, we we were on a couple shows together in Wayne, West Virginia. And really? the last one, it was for a company called Blackgate Pro Wrestling. And uh, he, the guy just looks like a million bucks. He's looked like that since he was... <laughs> he really does. He came out of the wound looking like just that. Just looking great. But this guy... He's literally built like Adonis. Like, yeah. he's just He's stacked. a statue. Yeah, he's stacked, bro. So no him. one got paid for this show. The promoter yeah. left. Whoa. They flew him in from Atlanta. So they were supposed to be paid. Yeah. Oh, wow. They flew him in from Dirt Atlanta. Bags. He was staying at the Pioneer Inn in Wayne, West Virginia. He still a, has physical a motel. keys. A motel. Still physical keys to get in. Yeah. And no one got paid. So me, him, Tyler Matrix, Chance Riser, we all sat around in a circle. And I watched this man have seven girls from Marshall come to his hotel that night. Seven different women. <laughs> it's no surprise when you look like this. He's, he's a beautiful man. He's, he's a really beautiful is. man. He really is. Uh, he's he's a current United States champion, but I, we always that's have awesome. the, we always have that Blackgate wrestling memories together. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, but it's, it's crazy. then the dirty, dirty in West Virginia yeah. getting slumming it up, like just but, slumming. Uh, I love it, dude. No one got paid. We we're all mad. The promoter left, sent his mom <laughs> in to tell us that he couldn't pay us. Wow. Yeah, and some what of the wrestlers happening? cornered. Uh, you didn't send your mom to tell anything. Like, believe that, dude. It's been it's crazy how many times I haven't been paid. And, and it's really, stiff. yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, a, a quick story: I wrestled this death match show in Akron, mm-hmm. Ohio. Uh, I was the only non death. I don't do death matches. Matches. I was only non. I was only yeah non death match, match like show. Only weapons or something. Yeah, yeah it's like elaborate. class. It's like a lot what Drex does. Like Alex. Okay, does. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, shout out Bob Drex, Wire. baby. He he's about to come on. Thing. He's doing his thing in the death match scene. Uh, like they use glass, really whatever Thumbtacks. They, tables, Thumbtacks, things like tables, that. Tables, yeah. uh, Sick. Anything Hardcore, you can think baby. of. Mouse traps. That's real punk. Uh, Pondo uh, punk t- tells a story in his book where he got s- slammed onto a thing of sharpened number two pencils. And he says he st- he still has a big black mark on his ass from it. Uh, but that's that's a deathmatch scene, man. They bleed and they they do it well. And there's there's an audience for it. I'm not it. Are I they don't actually like the of bleeding blood. though? So I'll I'll pull back the curtain. Let's a let, bit. let's let's see how the sausage is made because uh, I am uh, I'm a dummy to this. So a lot of people think it's fake blood, uh, which mm-hmm. I don't blame you for thinking that. But yeah. what it is is uh, a razor blade, usually tucked into your wrist tape or your, uh, your finger tape. Okay. And you just pull the tape back, and you cut yourself right above the hairline. Really? Uh, with a with a razor blade. Uh, wow. And that's, it's called gigging or getting color or okay. uh, the gimmick, as some people call it. Sick. Uh, but, yeah, it's all real blood. Uh, and 
I hate blood. I'll pass out at the side of yeah, it. Yeah, it's not so your jam. Deathmatch is not for me. Yeah. But, dude, those guys are killing it. And, uh, Shout out to them. I'm going to stay far away from it. You, I, we got, I, I interrupt you. I'm sorry, man. Uh, go back. I was shouting out Drex. Uh, go to the Akron Great show. Guy. Yeah, Great yeah, guy. Great yeah. guy. So, Akron, Akron Deathmatch, so, in a, inside of a hibachi restaurant. That's so tremendous. imagine That's Fuji, tremendous. imagine Fuji. Literally, come to my work and let's do a match. With a wrestling ring let's in the middle match. of it. With guys stabbing themselves with wooden skewers, <laughs> putting hy- uh, hypodermic needles through the cheeks. And then people get cooked for? Or yes. Like they, oh, yes. My, this n- is love. My now wife threw up. I'm talking to my owner. I'm talking to the owner. We'll make it happen. I'm going to talk to him. Can we please do a wrestling match in yeah. the middle of this and like promote it like crazy? So no one got paid for that either. And, of course uh, they didn't. It was in a hibachi restaurant. people throwing shrimp in the air so the yeah, wrestlers to catch it right in the middle? It was you were in a restaurant terrible. wrestling. They're not going to pay you? Terrible. Terrible. The reason I bring that up, because death matches. Well, at least you get free food. Did you get free food? No, I didn't get anything. Oh, no, I, did, I got nothing. And I get no scallops. This, Come on, man. I wrestled this dirty. guy named Crazy Jack, and he introduced me to himself. He came up and was like, hi, I'm Crazy Jack. I go, Who introduced No, your name's like Daryl or something. It's not Crazy Jack. Yeah. Hey. You're Jim, all right? Yeah. You're Jim at best. Show me your ID. Yeah, let me see your birth certificate, guy. Uh, but uh, Mr. Klosterman was going to come to that show. Last second, he canceled. Thank God, because yeah. he didn't know it was a deathmatch show. Oh, God. And he would have been inside this hibachi restaurant <laughs> watching these guys bleeding on the tables, and oh, it man. was disgusting. Where's the health department? Yeah, where is where is the Not code in Akron, Ohio. Where's the code enforcement? It was in this, like, the, the worst crazy. part of Akron, too. The grocery yeah. store across the street, it was like a little convenience store. Like, I lived in Cleveland for a little bit, so yeah. I'm used to, like, the you know, cashiers behind glass sure, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, everything was behind glass. Wow. You couldn't get anything. And what year was this? This was 2018. So COVID didn't even hit, so the glass yeah, wasn't even uh, a 2019, thing. 2019, yeah, I'm sorry, like, 2019. The COVID, like, glass wasn't even a thing no. at all gas stations yeah, yet. Yeah. It was you like know what March mean? 2019. I got yeah. my only speeding ticket I ever got after that show because I was so mad I didn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, you had to God. not get any shrimp. You didn't get no shrimp. I didn't, you didn't get, get any no food. steak. No noodles. Where's the fried rice, boy? Watch all this blood. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. So that's that's for all. So now we have. Like, give me your all time top three. All time top three. Uh, favorite or best? Favorite. Favorite. Colt Cabana. Uh, okay. The reason I got into wrestling. Got you. John Cena's the goat. Goat. And then uh, Christian. If you are familiar yeah. with Christian, Christ- like no. Ed- Edge and Christian and I remember Edge, Gangrel, Gangrel, Gangrel. Gang- yeah, Christian was always. They were vampires uh, when they first came out, and yeah. then you don't remember Edge. I remember Edge, Edge. was pretty big for a while. I remember Edge. It was Edge because and Christian was, for a long uh, time. I remember Edge well, and also somebody I forgot, Matt and Jeff Hardy. Those were some yeah. of my favorites yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about the Hardy Boys. Yeah, I was man. just they on were... a show with Matt on last Saturday. Really, at, at Wrestle Cage, That's Carolina. Super yeah. cool. That's I've been on a few cool. shows with him, but. You ain't got flex on us like that, bro. I mean, you know, you ain't got flex on us. You know, I like some of the high flyers too. You know who was it? I like some of the high flyers, like one hundred percent, like them Rob, or uh, Rock it? and Roll uh, Express. Uh, Rob, uh, yeah, they were really, yeah, they, they were. Rob Van Dam, was they that still was yeah, one? Rob Van Dam, Rob Van Dam, Absolutely. he was cool. You Eddie Guerrero, nasty boys. oh, yeah, I remember the Nasty, nasty boys. boys. Yeah, Eddie I Guerrero was a high boys. flyer. He was pretty. Yeah. was he a high flyer technically? Yeah, yeah. I liked Absolutely. him. I thought he was really especially cool. in his WCW days. Yeah, Rey Mysterio, Rock and Roll. Yeah, that's um, Juvenile Guerrero was his name. Hubertude, Hubertude, that's it. Hubertude Guerrero, yeah, yeah. See, I'm old school wrestling. I don't know any of these new wrestlers you were naming. Like, I, I, I can pick out what Roman Reigns looked like just because he's all over, man. He's, because he's, he looks like a god. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really that's, does, I've seen him dude. on like he's built maybe like the video game or he's something. He's money, man. Yeah, he's yeah. money. Yeah, it's good for him. But, but like, I'm more old <laughs> school. Like, dude. I remember like the Nasty Boys. Like, I can tell you that as a little kid, I remember the day that uh, Hulk Hogan got a concussion from King Kong Bundy, and they didn't think he'd ever wrestle again. It wasn't real. It was all. Part Script. of the story. Listen, guys, I bawled my eyes out for two days. I needed counseling. I hated King Kong Bundy. Oh my god! I hated that man. You I, were big mad. I, he broke. He broke my hero, Hulk big Hogan. Big mad. I watched. Yeah. I watched the you know the wrestling cartoon. What was it called? Uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Yeah, dude, my man was yeah. on it. He was yeah. ready. Yeah, dude. He'd been yeah. waiting for that. He was waiting for that to come up. That was killer. Man. So I mean, he was my. Not only was he like. My wrestling hero, but he was like my favorite cartoon That's character. Awesome. He was a real person. That's yeah. so cool, and King man. Kong Bundy broke him. I remember. I, him. I was like maybe five, and I I was seriously like my parents had to like console me. Yeah. So I'm old school wrestling. So uh, I remember when he had 
the black, the black oh, beard. NW. In, yeah, yes, Hollywood. Yes, NW yeah. Hollywood, baby. That I love that Hulk Hogan. I like playing with yeah. him on the game. Yeah. Like on 64. Like that was crucial, man. I really enjoyed that. <sighs> yeah. The, when it comes to best of all time, it's Austin, <coughs> Cena, Hogan. It's okay. wrestling's not making oh, 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 Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, Austin, and then Cena, and Hogan. John Cena, and then Hulk. Hogan. I think Cena's the best, but yeah, uh, he really is. When it comes what about to the Rock, to it, he's he's up there. If the Mount Rushmore, I'd put him on it too. Really? Okay. Um, Who else? Undertaker. <sighs> Taker, Flair. Well, Big Show. <sighs> Big Show's good. Was he a good wrestler? No. Here's the thing. He though. Was. Are we, are we okay. talking technical? Or are we talking a little bit of everything? So, to me, who, who would you say was like the best technical? Like actually, Kurt had Angle, the, the, probably the Angle, yeah, Bret Kurt Hall. Angle. Okay, uh, Bret Hart. I almost said Bret Hart. I was, yeah, I was yeah, torn. Bret's awesome. And then probably that whole uh, family was awesome. I mean, the the, yeah, the, the school Malenko. was yeah. Yeah. Was, that, was that another guy? Uh, no, there was Bret Owen, Bruce, um, and then Jim the Anvil yeah. Neidhart wasn't really related. Yeah, I don't think, but they Bulldog pretended was related to. Yeah, him British Bulldog was brother in law. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wrestling's about making money at the end of the day. Yeah. Yep. And those three, Hogan, Cena, and Austin, have made oh, more money yeah. than anyone. Oh, yeah. Besides The Rock. Uh, well, well, because of movies. Rest- because of movies. In wrestling, you're yeah, right. The you know, rest- I was going to say, the richest, re- or the richest wrestler is The Rock, hands down. Yeah, because because unless you're counting Vince McMahon. But I think he's got more money than him yeah. now. No, no, not Vince. Dude. Vince is a b- 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 billionaire. I thought- yeah. Is he truly though? Well, yeah, who knows anymore? Yeah, let's look at the yeah. net worth here. But he just dude, got... The Rock has been crushing movies since yeah. the late nineties. Yeah. yeah, like crushing movies. Let's see here. But The Rock's run in WWE was just short. It was ninety six to like oh. Yeah. He's not a billionaire, but he's worth eight hundred million. Yeah, he's close. Yeah. Now let's look at Vince McMahon here. Uh, but yeah, those those saying, three have made more money than anyone. And, and what comes Hulk Hogan's like, in a bunch of movies too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's in Rocky. no holds barred. He's, he's in Rocky for a second. Uh, what was his Christmas movie? Oh, you movie? got yeah, Vince McMahon, two point seven billion. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely uh, right. I can't remember what that Christmas movie he's, Hulk Hogan yeah. is in, but uh, I'm gonna watch it this year because it's supposed to be like the worst Christmas movie. Yeah. Ever. I love it, and yeah. I'm gonna love every second of it. I love it. it. I love bad movies. I love uh, it. Yeah, a good, a good about making money. A though, good man. B movie will get you all the way together. Oh you yeah, it get you all the way together, man. There's some good ones. There truly is. So let's see here. You named all three of your best. So let's. Uh, let's I'm, I'm gonna ask one real quick. Yeah, yeah, throw it out. Who is the wrestler that you have wrestled that you have the most respect for as a, a as a wrestler? Like not just as a human being, but as their like talent and everything about them. Uh, I'll, I'll give you two: Jervis Cottonbelly, um, Kevin Cassidy. Uh, Kevin Condren's his real name. Kevin Cassidy. Uh, he has a bunch of different gimmicks. When I wrestled him, I was I had no right to be in the ring with him. I was so new and I didn't know what I was doing. Not that wow. I do now, uh, but he was. Whenever I wrestled him, I realized, man, I have to get better. Yeah, I am that, not in this guy's dude, league. Dude, that's what I love about music too. When you kick it with somebody and like you're just kind of jamming a little bit, or you're kind of picking their brain on music, and you're like, oh my god, I got to get good. Yeah, like get good. I ha- get good, bro. I'm not, like, I'm not in this guy's league. Do better. Act yeah. accordingly. You're over here. Yeah. You're an amateur. And even if you've been doing it for a while, and some people they just show you up, and it's so humbling, and it makes you a better. Yeah. Yep. It makes you better in your passion. Yep. You know, Here, here's something that. I always wanted to ask, because you know, I, as a teacher, I meet a lot of kids who are like, "I'm gonna be a professional wrestler." Where was your moment where you went? This is something I want to do, and it transitioned into, "This is something that I could actually do." So in high school, I wasn't shy about my love of wrestling. Right. Uh, you really knew. weren't. No, everyone knew I loved wrestling, I, but I was shy of my uh, my dream to be a wrestler. Because you were, because I remember you and AJ. Not to interrupt, I'm sorry, but expand on that. You and AJ talked about like backyard wrestling, like, yeah, jokingly. Yeah, it was very like self deprecating. It was, but uh, continue. I'm sorry, but I was in college. I went to school to be a, a welded a welding and engineering is what I went for. I got my degree in it, but I was sitting there welding some pipe one day. Listening to Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast with, uh, with Kevin Owens. They yeah. were talking about going to the zoo. And, uh, Colt Cabana, he's the one with that website you told us earlier. What was the that podcast. website again? The, the, podcast. Podcast. The, art, the, the, the Art of Wrestling. No, the one that had uh, slash Casey King. What was that? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, run that. slash Casey King. Go one, buy a t shirt. Uh, the nineteen ninety nine plus shipping. One more time. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Casey King. <laughs> Let's go, uh, I've baby. got a bunch of designs Whoa. on there. I just put a Fight Club design up there on there. Sick, yeah. I saw that. All right. yeah, that yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I had to plug for no, a minute. No, you go please. ahead and go back. Shout out Chuck apologize Shout out Chuck, for Chuck Palin. Plugging my merch. Never. Exactly, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, they were talking about going to the zoo, and I was sitting there welding some pipe, and I was like, I, I went to school to be a pipe fitter because everyone in my family was a pipe fitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone on my mom's side was a pipe fitter. They all, they're all blue collar guys. Gotcha. Uh, but I was sitting there welding. I think it was doing a final. And. Uh, 
I was like, man, I got to give this a try. I have to. If uh, if I don't, I'm not going to be happy with myself. If it, right, if it absolutely. doesn't work out, yeah. fine. But I'm not going to not try. Yeah, chase uh, dreams. Believe yeah, so not that, just paper. Yeah. That Definitely. weekend, I went to Milton, West Virginia, to train with Shane Storm, who was an okay. independent guy, mm-hmm. uh, who I should have shouted out earlier, but uh, he's going to hate me for that. <laughs> but uh, he's just an independent guy who's, who's been all over West Virginia, who's helped me a lot. He was trained by Bobby Blaze back That's in awesome. the early 2000s, awesome. and uh, he's a great guy, great worker. Um, and I think you posted about him the other day, didn't you? I read something the other probably, day. Probably, yeah. You said something about how he was how you kind of got into – Bobby yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's one of my wrestling uncles. Like, Bobby's my okay. wrestling dad. He's one of my wrestling uncles. Go, Jillian's baby. my wrestling mom. Let's go. Um, but, yeah, he's, uh, he, he took me under his wing there for a second, and then I was like, man, I really need to focus on college. So I did that, went back a year later, got involved with some people who had a ring in their backyard who, mm-hmm. who uh, Taylor knows that yep. I'm not going to give them the benefit yeah. of, yeah. of shouting out. Yeah, no. And then eventually I got hooked up with Bobby Blaze. Yeah. And, but, yeah, that I was just sitting there listening to Colt Cabana and Kevin Owens talk about going to the zoo. Mm-hmm. I was like, I have to be a part of this somehow. Yep. And uh, it happened in college, 2015. That's I remember awesome. it very vividly. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I remember so first cool. my first time I heard it, and, you know, I'm still seeing you. I thought you was a freshman, so I'm still seeing yeah. you as this – scrawny little dude. Year old. You know? I still am, yeah. Like, yeah like, I mean, you're a lot bigger than nah, you were you had a 14. glow up, bro. Yeah, you like, you, you had definitely, a glow up, thank dog. You. Yeah. Like, you, you definitely used put to in be the work. goofy looking, and now you out here. Now you out here for real, I mean, bro. he's like, still a little bit goofy it. looking. Nah, oh, I absolutely am. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, man, but, you had a glow up. That's real. But, like, I mean, I remember seeing him, and I was like, what? And then I started following a little bit, and I was like, okay, okay. My boy's doing it. He's doing it. Let me... This is kind of uh, a little bit embarrassing, honestly, but I don't get embarrassed, so I'm t- I'm saying it, bro. So I swear on everything I love because Tommy Newton, shout out to my guy. Oh, That's God, my yes. guy. That's literally my dog, like for real. And you were doing a show that he was at, and you came out to uh, I'm Walking on Air. Is that what's yeah, called? Yeah, Believe your, It or Not is, by Joey Scarborough. Is that your song? <laughs> yes. Literally, I played Wait. that song 27 times after I watched That's that video. That's a theme song of you. to a TV show, the right? The Greatest American Hero. Yes. 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 So literally. I, I watch a clip of my man, and I'm like, Dang, I'm going to play that again. I'm going to share it on every page I have, too. I got you. I'm, I'm going to plug this hard. So then I'm like, man, that's, I'm going to hear it one more time. So I play the clip again. I'm like, oh, my God, this is a banger. It's a banger. Listen yeah, to it in my it car is. 37 times, bro. No joke. No shame. My man put me onto a great song. Shout out to Casey have you ever seen? Up. Have you ever seen the show? No. Grace making here. Oh, that's I like from when I was a little kid. Though. Yeah, that's really? old it's so school. cheesy and campy, it, it's but it's so, so good. Bad, awesome. but it's so good. It's so bad, it's good. It's yeah. one of those. It's, that's great. It's it just because before that, I was using "Give Me Back My Bullets" by Leonard Skinner. Okay, that I love doesn't that. fit Casey King. No, no it doesn't. No. But it's a great song. Uh, Casey King is a li- like I said earlier. He's, he's a cartoon, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and I love Leonard Skinner. I love Skinner. Uh, but I needed something to fit me. And I went through a bunch of things like Shadows of the Night by Pat Benatar. Yeah. I Ooh, wanted to Pat do Benatar New Soul by awesome. Yao Nam, or uh, oh, however you pronounce the name. Oh, dude, New Soul? Yeah. That's a, yeah. That was one of the first songs that my daughter learned to sing word for word. Yeah, so Str- good. Dude, and we sang it together. Like, like so soon good. we're probably going to record it in the studio do a cover yeah, because yeah. she can sing it really well. So for a little bit in between the two, I used a mashup because I'm a 2000s kid, 90s, Absolutely, 2000s kid. Yeah. Uh, I was born in 94, but I remember the 2000s vividly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was too 90s, young 90s baby, 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I used a mashup. It started with All Star by Smash Mouth. Yeah. Right? It just was <laughs> some bad. And then it was like a record <clears throat> skip, and it went to uh, uh, Good Riddance by Green Day. Okay. Nope. And then uh, Follow Me by Uncle Cracker. Nice. Uh, Photograph by Nickelback, New love Soul. It. Love it. Uh, I think that was it. Mm-hmm. And then it went into some. Whatever, whatever, just generic, yeah, yeah, generic yeah, yeah. beat. Gotcha. Uh, and then I found uh, it just came on the radio one day, yeah. uh, and I was like, "Man, I have to have this. This is me. Dude, this yeah. is me. It yeah. Literally, it's is perfect. you. Yeah, it's it, perfect. It, it, it's, it matches well, with you like the, the, so well. The new trunks. I got, I gotta yes. say that the new trunks are 100 percent Casey. The Scooby Doo ones. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna yes. tell you another thing that I have to compliment on compliment to you in person and tell you man to man i'm not gonna lie you made me laugh out loud and cackle like i was a small child again when you enter the ring and you go to show love Every and time. you get up into the refs and you're just all upon him and he's just or he or she whoever's reffing or whatever there that is literally face the, full of casey king that, right there I'm Dude, hoping I'm hoping I'm before you do that that you make man. sure that you are squeaky clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. It depends on the ref. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. that. If I like I, you, I you're always good. get consent. And uh, if there's if it's a female ref, usually I'm working uh, heel a bad sure, guy yeah, yeah, with yeah. a female ref. 
and uh, we I can't Claudia is her name mm-hmm. down in Tampa I was working recently like in June yeah. and she had the idea I asked her if it was okay she said yeah and she's like what if I after you do that I push you down like they always do yeah. and then I look at the crowd and I go ah <laughs> and I said if you don't do that I'm going to be very disappointed I'm going to be offended yeah. at that point because that's hilarious that. that's hilarious Yes. And she she did that and that crowd loved it. Loved they it. ate it up. And I was working some guy who's completely deaf. Oh wow! And he had no idea what was going he on. Oh, he had wow. no idea. That's crazy. And I'm almost deaf myself. Believe that. But, yeah, I'm hard uh, of hearing too, bro. For real. Dude, it, 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 that crowd loved it. That and, is hilarious, uh, man. I can't remember how that <clears throat> came about. Me getting that idea. I don't think. I think dude, somebody gave it to me. That uh, is a it's great. great. Signature move. Yeah. That is yeah. tremendous for your yeah. character. Great intro. For yeah. wrestling Best intro. in general, yeah. dude. That is like next level. I got to send you your flowers it, on it that. It makes Thank me you. angry awesome, that man. whatever video game it was where you could modify your created character where you could actually have their intro and everything, it makes yeah. me mad Smackdown. that that wasn't a possibility. Believe that. Hey, maybe in the future. Yeah, oh, yeah. When Casey go. King's on the game, let's, let's make go. that. I let's can't wait until somebody rips it off. But oh, yeah, man. it'll happen. It'll yeah, happen. I, it's so good. You've been doing it for a minute. Yeah, I have. You have videos of it from doing it for like it's years great. now at this point at yeah. least three years i feel like uh about four i think okay. i started 2018 with Boom. that there you go uh, four going on five years so it's become my thing that it, and the confetti the confetti cannon, cannon. cannon. yes and that's Literally. what was the documentary you it. did you did a documentary that i watched that and i watched absolutely it too loved i shared it, it. you already absolutely know i show mad love baby what was that yeah so this uh this college student from marshall named hunter way who's now killing it in in video made filmmaking wow. uh he's uh, he's just so talented mm-hmm. Uh, he showed up to a, a promotion in Hamlin, West Virginia, and he was doing a documentary about just independent wrestling in general. Okay. Uh, and he interviewed me. He interviewed a couple other guys. And a couple weeks later, maybe even a couple months later, he was like, man, this documentary isn't going the way I wanted it. How would you like to be the, the focus of it? That's Instead awesome. of just independent wrestling, it would be Casey King. And I said, yes, of Dude, course. Yes, please. Of course. That sounds great. So he followed me around. Feed my for, ego. Yeah, you know, let's absolutely. Go. absolutely. Yeah, you have like, to have I'll an take ego. It all. Yes. Bring it you on. have to. Do I need to pay you? I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, sounds like, yeah. sounds oh, like you money? free promotion. Like, this is great. So he did it completely for free, of course, because it's for his capstone project for yep. college. And, That's awesome. Um, he did such a good job. It's on YouTube it called was, I Am the Strongest Man Alive. It was awesome. Uh, and I'm not going by that moniker anymore. I'm not calling myself the strongest man alive anymore because now I'm squeaky clean. Yeah. But that documentary is still, like, I talk about my, my battles with mental health and uh, what inspired me to be a fresh professional wrestler and my yeah. mindset going in yep. and how I want to be different than everyone. Yep. Awesome. Everyone's running, so I want to walk. Yeah. And uh, instead of the opposite. Straight up. Uh, like, I want to be, like, wrestling is full of your uh, macho men and egotistical people who want to be the next Stone Cold. Yeah. You know, BFA come on. Be and, yourself. Yeah. That's what we were just uh, talking about, man. Be yourself. Uh, like, do, everyone wants do, to be do, macho, do and I'm over here. I'm the complete opposite. You of want that. to lose almost. <laughs> it's like you don't care. Like, you just want it to be a good show. Yes. You are there to put on a show. That's you are all I care about. Yeah. You don't care about winning or doing this, that, and the third. I mean, winning, winning's good, too. But Winning's fine. Yeah, winning's yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. hate it. I don't hate it. You're not, like, against winning, but it doesn't bother you. You're no, not, like, never. you are a great sportsman. You have great sportsmanship. You have great showsmanship. That's what shows are supposed to be entertaining. You bring that yep. level. You bring that vibe. You're cool man. with being the butt of the joke. Yeah, bro. Yes. That's what I love. It. And, and not just cool with it. Like You embrace yes, it. Yes, do that. That's like you I said want. with the referee. You know what I mean, yeah. yes, please. I uh, So when I'm a heel, I absolutely want people laughing at me. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm a baby face, a good guy, I want people laughing with me. Yes. I want right. them right. laughing at That's the heel. Good. I want yeah. them. Uh, and, and, yeah, I don't care whether win or lose. I'm still going to make money at my lunch table. Yep. And, uh yeah, I embrace that. And I it's want awesome to be that. because when you are wanting people to laugh at you, you're throwing everyone around you and their surrounding softballs to blast home, yeah. bro. Like, yep. you're wanting home run. You're throwing them home run lobs, dude. Yeah, absolutely. You want them to make fun of you and want them to it's push fun. the envelope on it. And I love that. It's such a fun vibe for everyone involved. I think seeing that documentary was the moment that I was like, okay, like, he's not just playing around with this. Like, he. <clears throat> Has really, he's not just da- da- dipped his feet in like. Yeah. He, he's he's in the water. He's yeah. in. He's swimming. So wow. you know, I mean, I know the, you know you never feel like you're making it, but I feel like you've definitely got the point where, I mean, you I've have seen, I've goals. seen a, yeah, I, I've have seen a lot goals. of our, our lot of local people, you know, dip their feet into into wrestling, and mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. you know whether or not you feel like you've made it where you want to be. Obviously, you're never yeah. you're never where you want to be, but I feel like you've definitely like that was the moment where I was like. 
my man. He's he's my moving. Man. He's moving. And, and I feel like you you know you had that setback last year. You had a you had torn ACL. Is that right? Torn ACL. Yeah. So I mean, you've really. I mean, you've you've, you've bounced back. back. You've bounced back yeah. better yeah. than ever. Yeah. You know. That's, Be- I, I feel like you're a bouncy I am, ball, you know, hit the heart, hit the ground yeah. hard, bounce back up higher. You know? I am doing the best work I've ever done right now. Yeah, I yeah. really feel like that. And when that documentary came out, I was really hitting a big stride. I, I that documentary came out, I wrestled Gilberg, which was a big match for me, one of my favorite matches I've ever had. Uh, I won a championship at my old home promotion, uh, and then I wrestled the Boogeyman right after that, which everyone was like, like all the casual wrestling fans, we went, like I graduated with, they're like, oh, you're wrestling the Boogeyman. I was yeah. like. I've done a lot of cooler stuff than this. Yeah, yeah. like, you whatever. Media, yeah. yeah well, uh, so I was really hitting a stride, and then COVID shut everything down. I was yep. gone. And then as soon as COVID restrictions got lifted and everything was going good and I was going to hit the ground running, I tore my ACL. Yep. I was out for a year. Uh, but since I came back, man, I made a bucket list right before I came back, and I've pretty much hit everything on that bucket list since I came back in the last yeah. was seven months, I think. Yeah. Uh, I had a tryout with Impact, a major company, earlier this year. Actually, before I even got cleared TNA to come Impact? back. TNA Impact. Oh, sick. I had a tryout with them in Columbus at the Arnold. That's uh, awesome. I didn't have a very good showing. That was just myself. I wasn't cleared yet. Uh, whatever. I worked for AEW. I was on Dynamite. Uh, what? Let's go. Uh, I, I worked at WrestleCade last that's weekend awesome. which in front of 8,000 people. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Uh, I, I, I'm getting flown across the country on another person's dime to wrestle and get paid for it. Dude, that's man. awesome. That's, that's next level. Uh, and that's really? just, that's the dream, man. That's, that's the dream. All I can ask you made for. it. Yeah. You made it, ask for. I haven't made it, but I'm working my way there. And but that's making it essentially, though, man. Yeah. It is. If, if I could you're tell you're making what, it. Yeah, you yeah. haven't made it, but you're making what's it. Your, you're getting there. What's your made it? I'd make a living from it. Exactly. Quit, quit my full-time job. Same. Uh, that that's that's making it. If I can if I can turn in my notice because of wrestling, that that's what it's going to be. That's the greatest day. That's the that's greatest, the greatest day. day. When that's, here's I the mean, big important question for the night: When you make it, and you're making a living, and you 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 get the amazing superstar Casey King, and you're you're rich from wrestling. Which of your freshman teachers are you going to take care of? <laughs> Name Mr. Lambert and tell us why. Uh, Mr. Lambert, because uh, exactly. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Lambert, because uh, in this, I don't know if you remember this or not, but uh, it, it really cemented you as my favorite teacher, you you and Step. And, yep, uh, shout and, out to Step. He's and, about to be my on boy, soon. My boy, my boy. And in later years, like recently, Klosterman, who we yeah. did not get along when I was in school. Yeah. Um, who? Mr. Klosterman. He, he was gone, gone by the time you got there. Oh, okay. But he has a brother uh, who loves wrestling. Loves it. So we, me and Cosman would bond over that and yeah. then hate each other for everything else. <laughs> but I don't know if you remember this or not, and this is the reason I always love you, is because I would we, I, we were obsessed with the show Deadliest Warrior. Yeah. Oh, dude, Deadliest yeah. Warrior was nails. You it's remember the so, game? So, yes. You I talk about it all the time. Sick. So good. And I would come up with these own my own scenarios, and I'd write them down on a piece of paper. Yep. And I'd come in, and I was like, Lambert, you got to vote on who would win. Yes. And you never turned me away. Never. I, I wasn't even in your class anymore. Hey. I was. I was like two yes. years. This dude solid yeah, you were coming rock. in like junior He's year. Yeah, I, like my, I always tell everybody when you're my student, you're you're always gonna be yeah. my student. Yeah. You know, you're always gonna be my kid. Well, my kids. Who I, I love all con- my students and still always the do. The Confederates of the American Revolution. You. <laughs> yeah, you always come up with some crazy ones. I love go, it. Go away, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you voted. Oh yeah, but I'm always voted. gonna give you time. I'm yeah, always yeah, gonna yeah, give yeah. you time. I might have to shorten it a little bit, but I'm gonna give you time. I love. But if I make it, absolutely, you're getting. So, my man, my man. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to end this podcast <laughs> on one piece of advice that you would give to new upcoming wrestlers. Yeah, the best one piece or one part of advice. And it, if, if, if it's a few things that go into one, you know, rock whatever. But we're going to end it on that note. I want you to lead us out with your best advice. Uh, just surround yourself with like-minded people. Uh, I wish I would have done that originally. Like I surrounded myself with a lot of people who were playing wrestler. They mm. weren't being professionals. Mm. Uh, they had no ambition. They had no drive. No they professionalism didn't. either. That goes back to your point. Yes. Yep. Professionalism, man. It's you Surround yourself with people who are going to work hard, who are going to motivate yes. you, and who are going to make you better. Because if you don't, you're going to be dead in the water like yes. I was for years. And like I, I was telling Lambert before this, tailing my ACL was the best thing to ever happen to me. Yes. Because it made me get my head out of my ass. And get after it. And get working. Get after get it, bro. Working, That's all you can do. Who's uh, going to carry the boats, baby? Yep. Come on. And so Since then, I, I have pretty much cut out everyone from my inner circle who was just the plain, rest, the, the plain dress up. 
Yeah. And spandex. With a we brand. can do that on Halloween, guys. And that's okay. Choose your own path. Sure. If that's what you want to do, if that's what makes you happy, that's fine. But that's not for me. I like wearing spandex. Hey, I'll rock, I'll rock, I'll rock, I'll rock, but, but I, I'll rock uh, spandex right now. Surround please. yourself with the right people, man. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals who are going to make you better. That. Yep. I love that. That's great. Uh, where can we go buy your uh, merch? ProWrestlingTees.com slash Casey King. That's Casey with a C. You can also go add my man on Facebook. At Casey King, is that your handle on YouTube as well? Yeah, uh, I'm not on YouTube right okay, now. Gotcha. Uh, Instagram and Twitter at KY Casey King. Uh, I'm, King. I'm very active on both of those. I'm awesome. posting every day. Uh, TikTok at KY Casey King as well. I don't post on there as much as I should, uh, but I post on there semi regularly. So Sorry. follow me on all those and uh, catch me at your local shows, man. And Let's go. Uh, upcoming show. Uh, next weekend, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee for Southern Pride Championship Wrestling. Don't know what I'm doing yet. Awesome. Uh, the next week, I'm in Nitro, it. West Virginia for a Thursday show. But what's okay. the dates on these? Let's uh, get some that's dates. That's December 15th. The one okay. in Knoxville is This will be out before that. December <clears throat> 10th in Knoxville. Okay, this will be out before that, too. Uh, December 15th, I'm wrestling Jason Kincaid, who is touted across the world as the most creative wrestler on the planet. Awesome. Uh, that's going to be one of those times where I'm like, I need to get better. Dude, shout out to you, man. Uh, you are doing it. You're crushing yeah. it. I'm so proud of I you, man. That, like, man. You should be I so proud of yourself. It. When are you in like, Nitro? Uh, Nitro, December 15th. 15th. Okay. Yeah, it's, that's okay. just an, it's a small, intimate show. I think okay. there's only going to be like 30 seats at that show. Love it. Uh, I think tickets go on sale uh, as we're recording this December the 1st. So, awesome. So uh, this pa- day, yeah, yeah that's Power awesome. Power Slam Pro Wrestling. That's awesome, uh, dude, December 17th, it. I'm in Bristol, Tennessee for Imperial Pro Wrestling, which has become my second home. I love it. Um, yeah, after that, I'm taking some time off for the holidays. Yeah, yeah. got to get right with the family. You yeah. know, got to get right with the family. 2023, I'm, I'm hitting it hard, You're man. You're hitting it hard, baby. I'm hitting it hard. So it's been a blessing to have this episode. This awesome. has been such a good time. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And make sure that you are subscribing to the YouTube channel, Together FTR. Hit that bell. Go bump my new song, DTM, by Nugs B. Make sure to slide over to Casey King's pages. Show all the love. Follow. And then make Squeaky sure. Queen. Squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. So, one more time, where can we get the merch? ProWrestlingTees.com slash Casey King. Let's go. It's been a great episode. An episode. It's been a great episode. Thank you all for tuning in for Together FTR. I need to make me some merch. <laughs>